Today we're going to learn about comparing and ordering fractions and decimals. We might be asked to order from least to greatest, and this is so that we have this list right here. Now what we notice about this list is that this list not only contains fractions, but it also contains decimals. So in order to compare them, it's easiest to go ahead and write them all out in decimal form. And that is, write any fractions or mixed numbers that you see in decimal form. And then we can compare them just as we have before with those decimal numbers. So if we rewrite 3 fifths in decimal form, we can write an equivalent fraction for 3 fifths as being 6 tenths by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2. And then so, that equivalent fraction for 3 fifths is 6 tenths, and the decimal number then is 6 tenths as well, written as 0 0.6. Now for this one here, since the denominator already is 4, well, the denominator is 10, and the numerator is 4, we can just write it as 0 0.4. Now we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4 decimals. Our next step again is to look at these here, and if we're ordering from least to greatest, we take a look at these numbers here, and then so we're comparing least to greatest, okay, 1, 0, 0, 0. Yeah, they're all in the same place value, they're all in the ones place. And then so if we compare the next digit there for those zeros, because we know those are the least to begin with, we've got 0 versus 6 versus 4. And then so we know the 0 comes first, and then so we know that 9 hundredths is the first number that we're going to write. For the next number, we're comparing 6 tenths with 4 tenths, and we know that 4 tenths comes before 6 tenths. Now, the thing to remember here is that we're going to have to give it back in the same form that it was originally written. Otherwise, someone might look at it and be all, huh? What's that? So it was written in fraction form to begin with, so we re write it in fraction form as well. We know that 6 tenths here was equivalent to 3 fifths here, so that's what it is that we're going to go ahead and write next. And then finally we have our last number there, 1 and 1 tenth. 1 is the biggest, yep, that was 6 tenths, 4 tenths, 9 hundredths. That's the same as those fractions and decimals that are written there, and that's how it is I look it over again. I look it over, make sure it is from least to greatest. I might be given this problem to order from greatest to least. So when looking at this problem, following that same strategy and that same approach, I can very clearly see that I can rewrite 3 and 17 hundredths as 3.17. I'll rewrite them all this time, that way I can see them all on one nice line here. One half I remember as being 0.5, so that 3 and 1 half is 3.5. Oftentimes people like to put a 0 after here, and the reason to do so is so that each of these numbers has the same number of decimal places after that. Sometimes people like to write their decimals vertically so that the digits line up. Let's try it this way, where we're looking at the whole numbers first, 3, 3, 3, 3. They're the same, and again I'm going from greatest to least. They were all in the ones place. The tenths place is 1 compared with 0 compared with 1 compared with 5, the 5 being the biggest, and remember we have to write it in that same form. It was given to us as a mixed number before, so we will also write it back as a mixed number. Our next number that we're going to end up writing there, if we look at this here, we're either looking at 3.17 because of the tenths place where they're the same, or 3.10. 7 compared with the 0. 7 is bigger than the 0, so we're going to write this one here, and we have to write it in this form right here, 3 and 17 hundredths, and then so I'll go ahead and write that in there. The next number was that following number we were comparing the 3 and 17 hundredths to. It was 3 and 1 tenth, and in this case we can't write that 0 in there because originally it was given to us as 3.1. 
Finally, we're left with three and one half. Whoops. That would be the greatest. Finally, we're left with three and six hundredths. I think I would have caught my error when I looked over my list at the end if I had accidentally written down that same number again. So looking at that again, three and one half, three and seventeen hundredths, three and one tenth, three and six hundredths. Okay, I do have the correct numbers and I also have them in the correct form. And then I can think about whether or not I've really ordered them from greatest to least. All right, three and one half. Oh yeah, yeah, three and one half is definitely bigger than three and seventeen hundredths because I know that three and one half would have been three and fifty hundredths. And then so if I was comparing mixed numbers, that would be the case for sure. Now if I looked at these two, I know, okay, well this is 3.17, 3.1, yeah, that makes sense. And this is very easy to see where the one is bigger than the zero. So my answer does make sense. Ordering these numbers is much more difficult than just comparing them. Do go step by step. And also don't get trapped don't get trapped there in that you should make sure to put them back in that same form as they were giving. No extra zeros if you used them. All right, it's your turn. This says to order from greatest to least. Please hit pause. And continuing from there. We know that 4 and 1 half is equal to 4.5, 3 and 2 fifths is equal to 3.4, and then again, sometimes you like to put that 0, it's okay. That way we have the same number of decimal places after each of those numbers. And then what you would do is you would put them back in order from greatest to least. Did you write 4 and 1 half? Did you remember to put it into a mixed number. Next number you would write is 4.17. Next number that you would write is 3 and 2 fifths, again as a mixed number. And then finally you'd have 3.19. Go ahead and check your work. Give yourself a pat on the back if you got it correct. And you can give me an aww if you missed it. Just learn from your mistake. Again, one of the most common mistakes when we're working with ordering numbers is to accidentally order in the wrong direction. And then so if it says from least to greatest, please do order from least to greatest. Let's take a look at another strategy and another approach. I've always told you that there's always more than one strategy and approach to solve a problem. In this case, I'm given a list of numbers again, and there are two decimal numbers, and then there's two fractions. And in this case, I'm going to look at it and go, well, you know what, I feel like working with fractions today instead. And again, it's a perfectly acceptable approach. And in some instances, you'd have to do that. I'll show you one more example after this where it is, it would be best to use fractions as opposed to decimals. And then so we have 8 and 17 hundredths. We have 8 and 6 tenths, and we know 6 tenths is also equal to 60 hundredths, and then so we'll do that conversion right now. 8 and 3 fourths, we know if we go to hundredths, we go times 25 and times 25, and some of you just might remember that, where you have that as 8 and 75 hundredths. And finally, we have 8 and 1 half. 8 and 5 tenths to begin with, and then we know it's also equal to 50 hundredths. At that point, I have the same denominator for each and every single one of those, so I can just compare the numerators. Again, when I'm going from least to greatest, I'm looking for the smallest numerator. And then so that will be the 8 and 17 hundredths, written in decimal form, is 8.17. Next comes 8 and 50 hundredths, and that's written as a mixed number as 8 and 1 half. Then, if I look at that there, least to greatest, it's 8 and 60 hundredths, also equal to 8 and 6 tenths, written as a decimal. And then finally, I have that mixed number, 8 and 3 fourths. And just choose whatever strategy that you are most comfortable with. You can do it both ways, and then be really sure of your work. 
next. Here's another problem. It says to order from least to greatest. You say here there's only three numbers to order. And in this case, we only have one number that's a decimal. So wouldn't it be easier? Probably be easier just to convert them all to fractions. Now at this point, if we looked at this here, we have three fractions, except they do not have the same denominator. And then so what we're going to need to do is to find that common denominator for them. If I count up 15, 15 times 2 is 30. Oh, I can go ahead and make 30th with those other ones as well, those other fractions. And to get to 30th, I multiply by 2. And so I have 14 30th. I'm going to go ahead and, and ask you to work this out yourself now at this point, and do write out our original list back in that same form that it was given to you. Hit pause. Again, we are writing 30th for these, so that's 9 30th, and 30 for here, that'd be times 6 and times 6 again, 12 30th. And then so now, since we have the common denominator of 30th, we can just compare our numerators of 14, 9, and 12. And since we're going from least to greatest, we know that 9 30th is the smallest one there. Then took a little shortcut there. At least I'll show my work there. And then so it was written originally and given to us as 0 0.3. And then so that's what it is that we're going to go ahead and write there. We'll write that first. And then comes 12 30th. But it was given to us as 2 fifths. And then finally, we have that fraction 7 fifteenths. So this list now is ordered from least to greatest. And yes, I could have gotten to my same answer there. If I had approximated the decimal form of 7 fifteenths as 0 0.4, and then it goes on and on. And then I had 0 0.3, and over here I'd have 0 0.4. At that point, I know that this is first, and then this one here, and then because this is 6, this would be 0, it would go on from there. In other words, it wasn't that easy to figure out 7 fifteenths. I actually pulled up a calculator to figure it out. Alright, here's one last one for you to try. We got 1 and 7 twelfths, 1 and 1 half, 1 and 75 hundredths, and 1 and 6 tenths. Hit pause. If we work this out here, let's work it out this way here. We've got 1 and 3 fourths there. We've got 1 and 6 tenths there. We've got 1 and 1 half still there, and 1 and 7 twelfths right there. And I'd have to go step by step comparing them. I'm looking at them right now, and I could be all, well, let's see. I have 1 and 3 fourths here, and I think 1 and 3 fourths, 1.75, is already bigger than 1.6. So I think 1 and 3 fourths, let's compare them with these ones here. Oh, I know 1 and 3 fourths is bigger than 1 and 1 half, but I'm not sure where it is that 1 and 7 twelfths would be. So I'm going to go ahead and compare those two first. 1 and 7 twelfths is less than 1 and 3 fourths. Because if we multiplied by 3 and multiplied by 3, this would be 1 and 9 twelfths. So at that point, and it didn't tell me at this point what to go because I forgot to put it there. Let's say we're going to go least to greatest. At that point, since I know that 1 and 7 twelfths is smaller than 1 and 9 twelfths, I'll write that first. I already knew at that point, I said earlier that 1 and 1 half, 1 and 3 fourths, least to greatest, I know to go 1 and 1 half. And then comparing these two numbers, I'm comparing 1 and 3 fourths and 1 and 6 tenths, I could come up with another common denominator.
of 40 in this case. Or I could have just looked up here and been all, oh wait, it's just 1.75 and 1.6. But I'll continue to go with this approach here. 30 is bigger than 24. 30 fortieths is bigger than 24 fortieths. Did you know that 24 fortieths is just another way to write 0.6 and 6 tenths? So in that case, least to greatest is the 1.6 here, and the other decimal is 1.75. One last thing I'll write on this slide here. 1 and 6 twelfths. Yeah, if I was comparing these two. Except I really couldn't get these into twelfths, or at least this one in particular would have been very difficult to get into twelfths. In fact, I wouldn't be able to. And that's why I compared them one by one by one. Again, there's always more than one strategy and one approach to solve a problem. That's all you need to know about comparing fractions and decimals.